I'm not good at maintaining a routine. It's gotten worse over time. Sometimes I'll sleep at 7 in the morning. I go to the gym as infrequently as I would like to. I turn in my shit late sometimes because I just had to watch the Dark Tournament arc for the third fucking time! The only form of consistency in my life now is going to Taco Bell at 2 in the morning and for some reason they're closed. Thank you for your visit, but we are currently closed. Please visit us again during... But when I was a wee lad in hell, it was a little bit better. I had essentially a nightly ritual outside of onanism that I followed. One, very simple. Wash yourself. You don't want to keep that same stink energy when you dream of spirit bomb in North Dakota. Two, pop the popcorn and turn on the TV and watch Adult Swim and watch episodes that you've already seen before. These are the usual that awaited me before my slumber. King of the Hill, Fam Guy, Futurama before Comedy Central stole it from Adult Swim, and eventually King of the Hill, those evil bastards. I don't feel bad talking shit about all those shows now. Oh, and this isn't Adult Swim, but I remiss not to mention the Disney Channel movies. Oh uh, yeah, time to watch Holes for the 47th time and see Shia teach dipshit to read. It was usually those in the show that is the subject of today's video, the Ablongs, requested forever ago before my three month dry spell. Thanks YouTube. By the Stiff Islands. The Ablongs is a show made back in 2001 by Angus Ablon, based off his book Creepy Susie and 13 Other Tragic Tales for Troubled Children, created originally for the Still Dead WB channel. Gonna keep kicking that one while it's down. But unlike the Ablon's manga, the Ablon's anime is sorta of different due to executive suggestions. So in the original book Creepy Susie, it's kinda of what it printed on the front, just a bunch of small tales of other peculiar children. Just lightly paging through this, I could see why some changes were made. Little Scooter. There's just something about Scooter that made people want to throw things at his head. Anything to get their hands on. All day. Not bad, just maybe something with a little more focus for a TV series is necessary. So the original main concept of the series centered around the kids in the clubhouse and at one point there was a clown I think? But at the request of producers, it was changed to have most of the conflict and attention centered around the family of the Oblongs. Uh, I'm taking a t-ball swing for the fences here. Uh, they probably did this to at least bring some sort of familiarity with the audience or resemble something they may know. Possibly something with an S? Maybe even an F. The Ablongs is a show about a bunch of poor underdogs trying to make it through in life to the best of their ability, while having to overcome the bad and literal toxic environment around them, with problems to overcome like alcoholism, lack of limbs, brain tumors, obesity, having a conjoined twin, being goth, oh, I can only imagine, giant ass slaps, well maybe, well maybe that one's not that bad, especially in today's society, but anyways, the point of the Ablongs is pretty clear in what it's trying to say about the differences and different outlook the wealthy and the much more less fortunate have. The rich or the hill people are completely oblivious to any sort of struggle these poor and sometimes mutated people have have to deal with and are much more absorbed with their material possessions, money, and status to a complete and comical level. I hate that Ogdongs become so cool, but I have no mind of my own so I simply have to accept it. They are downright soulless compared to this irregular family, the Ablongs, and the Ablongs are generally unfazed by the constant beratement of the hell people and carry on thinking family is more important or more valuable than money, status, or having doctors to take a look at this phallic looking dick tumor. Well, I think the themes of this series are not by any means that revolutionary. I think the way how it shows these themes in such an over-the-top way leads to a fairly entertaining series. I mean, some of these things by themselves are not really all that funny. I mean, childhood obesity and just straight obesity is probably one of the more sadder and more common problems here in America, but one of the more standout characters in the series is Helga, whose obesity jokes throughout I find pretty effective, along with her narcissism and angelic voice. You poor unfortunate creature. Yeah, it's not easy being blind. Oh my god, you're blind too? Here, take it all. Pretty much all the characters in this series that live in a valley are kind of like this. 
One of the more humorous things about this show is how oddly pleasant in ways that it can be. Again, you'd think a show about a bunch of people with weird deformities, ah, this won't be enjoyable at all. I think I get that because one of the primary protagonists outside of Milo, who is majority the center focus, Bob Ablong, his father, is just kind of happy every day. Out of all the people in the family to be a tad angered by their situation, you know, not having arms and legs doesn't sound very fun. Lieutenant Dan only had his legs blown off, but he was a fucking handful. But despite that, he still smiles and treats anyone he interacts with with kindness and respect and is most times hopefully optimistic. It's just this overly happy outlook in wake of just utter shit that made me really like his character. I majority hate these types. I do think the show has a sort of a problem with the family, mainly with the older brother characters feeling sort of lacking and not much mileage can be milked out of the little sister. And also, while Milo is the character that drives most of the series and is fine at it, the B plots with the parents typically overshadow the Milo fucking around with his friend's A plot lines more often than I think it should. Though in those plot lines, we sometimes do get to see Susie, who's now only reduced to a minor character who says something weird in a morbid and French accent accent once or twice an episode. Poor Susie, you were on the cover of the book for Christ's sake. May your legacy live in some guy's creepy porn folder. Another positive I think the Ablongs has is his style. I think the animation team on this pretty much nailed what was being drawn into Angus's comic. And the voice acting is quite impressive with Will Ferrell of all people playing Bob and Billy West playing most of the minor characters in the series. And a really good performance in this was by Jean Smart playing Pickles and she does a pretty top tier alcoholic mother voice. As soon as we get home, mommy's gonna spend some quality time I'm with you. Oh boy. The Ablons never really caught on. We could speculate forever on whether or not the general public didn't want to watch this due to the characters being the way they are. I could see it, but I don't know, I doubt it. But the show did sort of garner a small audience when Adult Swim picked it up for a brief period with some thinking, may hey, maybe another go around? But it's almost like 2020, that ship sailed. Angus Ablong pretty honestly said in this interview that his ideas for the TV series in terms of its writing wasn't going the way how he would have liked. The writers and I bumped heads in the beginning. I had a different vision than everyone else, and uh, I would say only 10% of my vision got through. I had left the writer's room never to return. I went to the animation house, and I started working with the directors, the animators, supervising director, the storyboard artists. I oversaw the animation there, and then I was genuinely happy. During the time that the Oblongs was being animated and developed, there were at least eight other animated shows out there that were being produced that didn't make it on TV. We were thrilled to have aired. The best thing about it was seeing the characters actually on TV, you know, moving, walking, talking. It was a thrill. I don't know, it could have entailed a lot of things like Susie's family members who look really cool and look at this boy. Pretty much his involvement from what I could tell really wasn't that much. And honestly, the more sad thing about it is how he found out it was canceled. I had heard that the show got canceled online from an online fan. I emailed him back and said, no, the Oblongs isn't canceled. I would know. When the show ended, I was both disappointed and relieved. Disappointed, obviously, because uh, my show had been canceled, and relieved because it was a constant uphill battle to get my ideas across. It ended up being a, a pretty good show. I'm not dissing the show, but it's not my show. It's understandable for him to feel this way about the show, but as a consumer, I think the product that what we got was satisfactory. If And if anything, it makes me want to see the original source material and other work by him. The Ablongs that I put like a numeric ranking on it is, this is like a really solid like 7 or 6. And yes, in my dumbass numeric ranking system, that's pretty good. This is like a few notches below some truly amazing adult animated series, is, but, and I mean this in a positive way, compared to a lot of meant to be hit adult cartoons. This is leagues better. Go watch it. It's very short.